This is Rota Riot Hotel Room Edition. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Joshua Bardwell. And I'm Stinger Swarm. And today, we are gonna shake up our transmitter. What? <laughs> Throttle on the left, yaw on the left, pitch and roll on the right. That's just how you do it, right? I mean, that's what I've always done. But that's not just how you do it. Some people do it other ways. Well, let's talk about what these different modes actually are. Most people in North America fly mode two. The other one that's really popular, somewhat popular the world over is mode one. I have a sense that a lot of people like in Australia, everybody I know who flies mode one is from Australia or New Zealand. So mode one, the throttle is now on the right, but yep. it's not just swapping the sticks. So the, the only thing that swaps is elevator and throttle. So yaw and elevator are on the right. left. Okay, and so pitch, roll and, pitch and throttle switch sticks. Yep, that's so, it. And that puts your pitch and your yaw on the same stick, uh -huh. and your throttle and your roll on the same stick. Correct. And there's two more modes, which we'll just make our editor stick a graphic up to show you, which are mode three and mode four. We're gonna try these different modes out and see just how much it screws with our brains and how mm -hmm. quickly, because we were actually debating this last night and saying, <laughs> could we even learn to fly a different mode? I didn't think, I thought that this was not even worth us filming today, honestly. I made him try mode four, because we wouldn't have to mod a radio. It's like, we're gonna fail horribly. Why am I going backwards? Why are we going backwards? <laughs> Dear God. That's just the same. That's a turn. Oh, it's just the proportions are not right at all. Hello, trees. Okay. Uh, what the F? Oh, my God. This is what beginners feel like. No, 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 no. That's weird. That's okay. That's really hard. I'll, you're right. First thing we're going to have to do in order to try different modes is I'm going to have to open up my radio and I'm going to have to change which stick is the throttle because, of course, the throttle is not spring centered. Anytime you're going to open up your Tyrannus, it's a good idea to take these shoulder switches, which are going to fall out and just push them back. Because that way if they fall out, then you'll be able to put them back in the right way around. In order to change the spring loading on the Tyrannus throttle, this thing here creates um, just a little bit of smooth tension on the throttle. This one here is ratcheting, and if you press it down, you'll get the ratcheting effect. You can just kind of see the ratchet mechanism here. So we're gonna loosen this because we don't want any additional tension. This screw right here is lifting the spring bar and making it not work, so I believe I need to remove this screw. It's been a long time since I did this. Yep, and so now I have spring there, and I'm gonna lift this, and now I'm gonna take this vertical piece here, I'm gonna lift it, and I'm gonna insert the screw here so it rests. Okay, yeah, so I now do. the spring is removed from this guy. We're gonna just tighten this one to give us a little bit of smooth tension on our new throttle stick, which is on the right side. So now we've moved the sticks. We've got a spring-loaded left stick and a non-spring-loaded right stick, but OpenTX still thinks that this is the throttle. So the next thing we have to do is change the mode here for our model. So here's how you change that. I'm gonna long press menu. Here in the radio setup screen, I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna do that by just pressing up and rolling through. And here at the very bottom, we've got the mode of the radio and I'm gonna change this to mode, let's go to mode three. Okay. Aileron and elevator on the left, throttle and rudder on the right. By changing the radio's mode, I believe that's the only thing we need to do and it'll, our channels and everything and our quadcopter will automatically stay the same. All right, well now that we've modded the radio, we've kind of talked through what we're gonna be doing today. There's really not a lot more to do than go crash Bardwell's quads. This isn't gonna be that hard. Let's go break stuff. Without even thinking about it, I go like this to push my throttle down, but it's not my throttle anymore, is it? <laughs> okay, throttle is down. We are arming. This is not my throttle. I gotta, let's just get the axes sorted. This is gonna be roll. Oh, crap. I'm just gonna take off. Where's my disarm? Okay, I'm so freaked out right now. I can do this. Oh my God, what's happening? Why is my quad, what is my quad doing? It's facing the wrong way. I haven't even taken off yet. I'm already freaking out. Oh my god. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. I tried to throw I tried to pitch back and I throttled <laughs> down. The camera it's laughing. so ingrained in my brain I'm getting in the air right now. Ha 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 ha. Oh god. Oh god. Pitch forward. Roll, roll. Just I have no control whatsoever. The quad is pitching back and I have no idea why it's pitching back and it just takes me so long to decide what I need to do to correct it. All the while, my fingers are doing the wrong things. Like I want to pitch back, so I throttle down. So it just gets out, away from me and out of control instantly. 
how high off the ground did you get it? I can't. I mean, I don't think I got it super high. I'm saying like pop it up 10 to 20 feet. But the thing is that when I go to pop it up, it starts like this and you kind of go, and then you're flying. Oh, you're not getting the first part? I'm just having trouble leveling it and facing it. And then when I pop it up, it starts going like this. For some reason, I don't know why. And I just don't know what to do to correct it. So I'm scared to give it throttle. What do beginners do? I, I really, my fingers just do not know what to tell the quad to do. I feel like a total noob. Get it in the air with authority. No, why? 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 Pitch forward, please. But not that much. Maybe I need to lower my rates. In the interest of acting like we're total beginners, one thing beginners do is start with low rates. So my rates are normally about 1,000 degrees per second, and I'm gonna take them way down, like 600, let's say, and maybe that will help. That's the throttle right there. I don't know where I am. I have to get back on the property right now. You're over the property. I'm barely. Yeah. No, you're right over where you were to start right now. You're about to be over the building now. Yep. I'm yawing around this way. Oh my God, my heart is pounding. You kind of got... No, like no, was... no, 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 it's not going right. I have to bring it you're... down. I have to bring it down. Oh God. Where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you it's at? Okay, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I put it down. Dude, you're not on the roof though, are you? No, I'm not on the roof. Okay, because you were close to the roof. I was looking. I'm on the ground. <sighs> that was really tense. I need a much bigger area for this. I couldn't come down because I kept pitching back when I meant to come down. Oh. I guess it came down a little harder than I thought. My habits are actually making it harder for me, I think, than if I were a ranked beginner because I keep making the wrong corrections and that just makes the situation worse. Okay, well, that's gonna do it for me. Let's, let's see how Stiggy does. So the first thing that I've done is taken my Crossfire out of my radio and put it into Josh's radio. Now he's got a model on here that's for Crossfire. And so it's gonna go ahead and pass the stick inputs through to the Crossfire module. He has a whole different arming sequence and oh yeah, channel order. Cause I do the spectrum uh, order, which is T-A-E-R. And I'm not sure what Josh does, but I'm pretty sure it's not that. So my quad is running flight one. And with flight one, you have the uh, radio setup wizard. So I'm just gonna rerun through the radio setup wizard with my quad, my crossfire, Josh's radio with the throttle on the right, and I'm gonna set it up so that it's ready to go in mode one. Woohoo! We have arming. Ain't no reason to be scared. I'm gonna rip this spot. I'm gonna dive that roof gap. I'm just gonna arm it. Whoa. 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 Your trim wasn't centered. And it also doesn't center very good. Yeah. So when it centers, it's like off a little bit too. Dude, it really doesn't center. Okay. Come up. Disarming is hard. Keeping it in the air is also very, very hard. I was like, all right, I'm up. I'm going forward. Now I need, I need more, more, like pitch it back to slow down. No, that's descending. More throttle. No, that's too fast. Oh my God, pitch up. What is that? And I'm in the ground. <laughs> you see that? stick flop there there's no fighting for all of that motion and so because of that because i hold the radio like this if i just let go then it's gonna just pitch back so i can't just let go of pitch now i'm just gonna come up off the ground down on the ground whoa see dude all i'm trying to do is gently lift it off the ground and put it back on the ground but what keeps happening is i start to lift it off the ground and as i and i'm like oh it's that it's coming back the, the nose is coming back i'm gonna i'm gonna leave it on the ground and i go to lower the throttle and i nose back and it flips over all right i'm in the air lower lower gentle inputs okay
Okay, that is not controlled. I gotta lower these rates. These rates are my normal thousand degrees per second, like freestyle rates. I may even introduce some dead band to help counteract that on the pitch. At this point, all I am really hoping for is to get it in the air and make a controlled turn doesn't have to come all the way back. 90 degrees of turn where I maintain forward momentum and I'm going where I'm looking. So if I can go and I can turn and go, I'm gonna call that a win at this point. <laughs> Hovering. Okay, I'm going backwards. Pitching forward, pitching forward. I'm high, I'm high. Oh my god, this is terrifying, dude. Okay. I got this. What's going on? Tell us what's going on. I'm flying, but like super stupidly high because I can't descend very well. Okay, I'm descending, but I'm descending towards us. Don't be terrified. I'm gonna fly it. Kind of backwards. <laughs> I turned! I turned! Fist bump. <laughs> that was terrifying. I had a moment like you did where I got too high, didn't know how to get it back down, was just like small inputs, small inputs. I have learned some valuable lessons about control of the aircraft in terms of what it is I actually do with the sticks because I'm having to think about it so hard that I'm like realizing what the components of a turn are. So there's tons of value in this exercise, but oh my goodness, this is, if you guys want to try this, I'm going to tell you right now, go to like the biggest sports complex you have that has like 40 soccer fields. This is not something for trying at your local like playground. One of the things we want to do for the episode is talk to some people who fly in other modes than mode two, which in the U.S. is certainly the most popular. You fly mode three, right? Yes, I am a weirdo, so I do okay. fly mode three. <laughs> Tell us what mode three is, first of all. Throttle and yaw on the right stick, and then uh, pitch and roll on the left stick. If I got this right, it's basically mode two, but you flip the, the sticks. Yep. Have you tried to fly in other modes than mode three? Yeah, I I have. I personally didn't enjoy the flight experience, but I think you're used to what you're used to. And when you change something, the dynamics change of how the flight characteristics are. It had, it had more to do with me not being as familiar than it actually was a disadvantage or advantage. When you were first learning, why did you end up on mode three instead of like mode two, like many people do? Okay. Three years okay. ago, you, we right. didn't have many resources, right? Three years ago. So I was like, okay, well, I wanna, I wanna get into this drone racing deal. Um, and the first thing that I needed was a radio. And I was like, well, I don't know anything about, at this point, I don't know anything about what's common, what's not common. So what what I thought to myself was, well, I'm right-handed. What's the most important aspect of flying? Um, and what I said to myself was throttle. Throttle control is key. It makes the quad go faster, up, down. So I, I personally would want that on my dominant hand. So now it's it's years later and you're obviously a great pilot. How do you how do you feel about that decision in retrospect? I think that there's advantages to that decision and disadvantages. So obviously, let, let's touch on the disadvantage. You're, it's not going to be an easy path to being a uh, pro pilot because all the radio systems are mode two in the U.S. If you go to any shop or if you uh, get hired by a company to I drive you. their uh, equipment, the equipment is probably going to be in mode two. Do you, have you ever run into a situation like at an event? I don't know if you go to a lot of events like Flight Fest or Rampage or the International Open where somebody's like, hey, can I check out your quad? Or they're like, hey, you want? I got a new, I got a seven inch X class. And they're like, here, check it out. And you're like, I generally don't like flying other people's equipment, um, so I, I kind of stay away from that fray. But what I would say is, is that if you're running a crossfire system, it's easy to switch out the module, and then you could just put the module into your Tyrannus, and you're good to go. So that's really interesting. You're right about that, actually. And Stingy did that, and, and it was easy for him to fly his own quad. There's that workaround. The other thing that um, I think I went to a meet meetup. Everyone wanted to kind of fly what my quad felt like because it was right. doing well. And it was right. really hard to do that, to, to, to let them fly because my transmitter. I'll, I'm open to letting people 
test my stuff out. Right. I don't, it doesn't matter to me, but they just can't do it. Yeah. Now that you are a better pilot, do you think? Do you still think there's an advantage to having the most important controls on your dominant hand? Yeah, that that's pretty much the biggest advantage, right? Is that I'm going to be a little bit more um, precise because it's on my dominant hand. I think that right now I would say that's the biggest advantage that you're going to be. You're going to have better ability to adjust your flight lines um, in flight than if you would on your left hand. Now that's all subjective, right? Because you yeah. know what you know. So you, know, you would have to test out certainly, both. Certainly, you know? yeah. Certainly, I mean, I'm left hand. I happen to be one of the one of the lucky left-handed people in the world. So when I fly mode two, in fact, throttle and yaw are on my dominant hand. Yeah. Um, but a whole lot of right-handed people out there are flying mode two, and uh, well, once you once you've become skilled at it, I think switching is going to really mess you up. I wonder if you would recommend somebody starting out right now who's right-handed. Whether you would say, no, f the trend, fly mode three. I would personally say that it depends what your goals are because, um, for okay, so for me, going back three years ago, um, there weren't that many people that were doing trick tutorials and, and things of that nature with stick right. cam, right? And there was even less people flying mode three. So, right. Right. So right. there there wasn't that ability to learn easy. So, so I would study the approach. Of, of certain things I wanted to do rather than just look at the input because the inputs wouldn't do me any good. So that's a good point. Yeah. Cool. Vic, that's, uh, I think that's it for me. I appreciate your time. It's been nice talking to you. I think the real takeaway from this is, you know, it's just fun to do weird things, but yeah. what could beginners learn about how to overcome? This is exactly what beginners experience yes. when they first start to fly. Make sure your setup is tight. Yes. So your sticks are centering correctly. Mm -hmm. Your trims are centered. Start in the simulator. <laughs> oh yeah. my goodness. If we had have practiced this in the sim today, even if we had have spent like 20 minutes in the sim before we came out here and did it, I think this would have been a much bigger success in the field. Yeah. Speaking um, of the simulator, uh -huh. we got a plan for you guys. This is episode's gonna go out on a Monday and I stream on the Quad Camp Online Twitch stream Monday nights. We are not gonna practice at all between now and the day this that you're seeing this episode. And then we're gonna stream tonight at 8 p.m. on twitch.tv slash quad camp editor. Quad right underscore camp. camp. We're gonna, tr he's gonna be mode one, I'm gonna be mode three, and we are going to race to see like who is the first to like finish a lap <laughs> in liftoff. Oh my God. We're just we're, gonna stream it, until we do it. I think a better challenge will be who can keep it in the air the longest. After all of that struggle street today, I need to go out there and show I you guys a, that I can still rip. I need a palate cleanser. Yeah. We're gonna put our radios back the normal way and we're gonna rip this pack. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I need that. Okay, let's all do right, it. let's go. Are we rolling? We're not going to be laughing Good. in a minute.